This Ignite session is going to focus on cannabinoid hyperemesis syndrome. So let's start with the case. You step into the room uh, and you're there on a nice kind of quiet, peaceful afternoon shift in your emergency department when suddenly your zen-like moment is shattered by the sound of severe vomiting. Now I'm not talking your regular kind of sounding vomiting, I'm talking blood-curling Monty Python style vomiting. You step into the room uh, to find a, uh, a patient clutching a blue vomit bag. He's looking totally uncomfortable. He states that he's had uncontrolled abdominal pain, nausea, and vomiting for the last 24 hours. In triage, he received some IV Zofran, but it didn't seem to help very much. So you see what you can do. You look up at the vital signs, and the vital signs look pretty good. He's normal tensive. He's afebrile. He's got a normal AccuCheck. He's got dry mucous membranes and appears dehydrated. On exam, you notice that his abdomen is soft and non-tender. Uh, while obtaining a history, he says that he smokes marijuana on a daily basis. And the only thing that helps is hot showers. Uh, as you place an IV and you hang a liter of fluids, you ask yourself, could this be cannabinoid hyperemesis syndrome? And what was it that Zoda said about rubbing ghost peppers on patients' bellies? <laughs> so cannabinoid hyperemesis syndrome, or CHS, is characterized by symptoms of cyclic abdominal pain, nausea and vomiting in patients with frequent cannabis use. If you haven't seen it, you soon will. Marijuana is currently legal in 29 states, including the District of Columbia. Approximately 60% of all the, page, all the people in the United States live in a state that now has marijuana legalized. So the pathophys of CHS is believed to involve vanilloid receptors in the emesis center of the hypothalamus. You see, these receptors have both anti-emetic and pro-emetic properties. THC, the psychoactive component of marijuana, binds to these vanilloid receptors. At low concentrations, THC has anti-emetic properties. However, at high concentrations, THC has pro-emetic effects and sends these receptors into overdrive. These receptors are also thermoregulated, which is why some folks have developed the uh, appreciation for hot showers. So how does capsaicin fit into all this? Well, capsaicin is the active ingredient in hot peppers. And as it turns out, capsaicin, like THC, has a real affinity for these receptors. They bind strongly to vanilloid receptors and enhance their anti-emetic effects. So where's the evidence? You're not going to find this in Rosen's and Tintinelli's. Maybe you'll hear about it on MRAP. And you're not going to find it in any randomized double-blind clinical trials, although I suspect you probably wouldn't have any difficulty finding volunteers. If you take out your phone and, and open up your camera, you can actually focus on this QR code here, and it'll automatically download the link to this article that I'm referencing. So again, there are no big RCTs on this, but there is a big case series that was recently published out of the Journal of Clinical Toxicology. It was by Laurel Dysak. She looked at 13 patients who came in with a, admitting for uh, cannabinoid use. They all got traditional anti-emetics. They all got uh, uh, capsaicin. They all got discharged home. So by and large, also disclosure, full disclosure, I do not get any money from capsaicin. <laughs> uh, so let's talk a little bit about dosage and application. Uh, this is the dosage that I use. It's 0.025%. Uh, there are higher concentrations, but this dose is available actually without prescription, so you can get it at CVS. It's also with my ED stocks. So it's important to wear gloves because this stuff does heat up. Okay? I put about one to two ounces on the patient's abdomen. Uh, it takes about 20 to 30 minutes to um, soak into the, sin, into the skin, and it lasts for about two to three hours. So getting back to my patient, I reevaluate him at bedside after giving the capsaicin topically. In less than an hour, he's feeling better, and he's ready to jet. But what if it doesn't work? It doesn't always work when I do it. So if it doesn't work, I reapply. And if reapplication doesn't work, I bring in other tools. Low-dose Haldol is my, my go-to for chronic gastroparesis patients and CHS patients who fail the capsaicin treatment. I usually start with 2 milligrams. I give it IM to avoid any of that QT badness. Um, interestingly enough, they work on dopamine receptors in that same emesis part of the hypothalamus. Um, so, who gets to go home? I've been able to discharge the majority of my CHS patients. Uh, they need to be able to tolerate orals and have normal vital signs. I encourage them to limit their cannabis use in the future, but just in case, I demonstrate how to reapply it. And I give them the two before they go. If they do need to smoke for, um, let's say, a medical condition, or let's say they're the dude, um, I encourage them to uh, try a different strain of the cannabis, um, uh, specifically the THC, as this has been shown to limit its uh, its absorption. So, in conclusion, bottom line is cannabinoid hyperemesis syndrome is coming to an ED near you. Likely, it's already there. Um, uh, traditional antiemetics don't work. They're about as helpful as Tamiflu. I recommend trying capsaicin. Thank you very much. Judges' comments.
So I have the honor of uh, commenting. Uh, thank you, David, uh, for a wonderfully put together uh, presentation. I thought the quality of your slides and your delivery were outstanding. Uh, my only, uh, I have a critique and a suggestion. My only critique is that I don't think there's any such thing as cannabinoid hyperemesis syndrome. I think it's made up. Uh, people have been smoking a lot of dope for decades, and uh, it's, it's a fad diagnosis today uh, that has not been demonstrated in uh, any uh, scientifically rigorous manner. Um, so I, I question the premise, forgive me. Um, and uh, I like your idea of Haldol. I'll throw out to the audience that for cyclic vomiters and people who get labeled as cannabinoid hyperemesis syndrome, my go-to is an antipsychotic that has dopaminergic properties but also has the benefit of anticholinergic properties which help with uh, uh, intestinal spasms and has a very, very, very long track record of being very, very, very safe at very, very, very high doses and that is Thorazine. So next time you have uh, one of these intractable vomitors, just try 50 milligrams of Thorazine intramuscularly times one. Uh, don't even put in an IV. 90% uh, of these patients look up at you after 15 minutes and they say, wow, thanks doc, I'm ready to go. <laughs>